Well, good morning. Good morning, church, and good morning as well to all those who are joining us here. It's a Sunday and a real opportunity to get close to the one that matters most. And I trust you'll be greatly blessed whether you're a regular uh, visitor here by Zoom or not. All of you are very welcome because Sunday is a wonderful opportunity to give praise and thanksgiving to he who matters most, even in the darkest of times. Um, I didn't realize when I agreed to do this, and what I'd actually prepared follows very, very closely to what Pastor David preached last week. He was warning us about the end times. And he was saying, while there is today, which is how the Bible puts it, there's still a chance to come to Jesus before it's too late. That's a message which is just so urgent. It's, it can never be said too often, and sadly, there are too few people who are prepared to say that. We are, of course, in troubled times. We're all affected by it, uh, by the pandemic. It's an oppression of a kind the world has never seen before. It's, it's never happened in, in our lifetime, nothing like this at all. And I would want to actually start, and I mean to encourage you in this, don't take it amiss. I want to interpret the pandemic as God sees it. And it's a complicated subject if you're not used to it, because the, the pandemic is not created by the living God. It is demonic. That means it is actually governed and ruled by a demon. That's why it doesn't respond consistently. It doesn't do always what people expect it to do. It's not just a simple pathological condition. It, it's actually um, a demonic virus. But the fact is that it's been allowed. The Lord has allowed this to come. And we're going to explore the reasons why, but not in great depth today. But this is not just a local problem. It's, it's the global problem. And that is amazing. It just shows how infectious it is that the whole world is involved in it. And the whole world seeks a solution. And hopefully the whole world will unite behind the one real solution. This is the thing. The seeds of revival are actually coming closer than we ever thought. What is actually happening, there is a head-on spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle between two armies. One is the army of heaven, and the other is the devil's armies, which are many. And it's a head-on, it's a head-on, it's not just a sideways uh, thing, it's absolutely, they're opposite, completely opposed to each other, because that is the nature of it. The devil is completely opposed to the Lord. And the prize is, of course, going to be our precious planet. There's, it always happens at times like this when there's confusion. You can't believe what the media say, what they're suppressing, how true things are, what bias they put on things. And there are lots of conspiracy theories. And quite honestly, come on. <laughs> Have we got time for theories? We need to be interested, if there is one, in real conspiracy. Now, I, I mention this because that is precisely who Satan is. He is a conspiracy against the kingdom of God. And a conspiracy is something which is being planned and hatched. I mustn't use the pastor's name in vain, <laughs> like he did. Um, sorry, David. I haven't um, said that on purpose. No, but conspiracy, the thing about conspiracy is it's always hidden. It is not conceived publicly. It is always hatched in secret, and hatched happens to be the word. So we, I want to read from Luke 12, a couple of verses here. Luke 12, chapter 2. And Jesus was actually talking about the Pharisees, but the principle that he states here is absolutely Frank, and it applies to everything, most definitely, including what's going on in the world at the moment. Jesus said this. This is a decree. He says, everything that is secret will be brought out into the open. Everything that is hidden will be uncovered. Whatever has been said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. What has been whispered to someone behind closed doors will be shouted 
from the rooftops. We need to understand God's heart in this um, so that we align with him because he hates anything which is concealed because he knows that is where the devil works and that is where dishonesty um, can, can flourish. So this, um, the battle that we're in, it is a spiritual battle, but it's fought, of course, here on earth. And we are the, the, both the prize and also the agents involved. We're, we are involved. It's not just a question about self-preservation. That, that's understandable. We're all concerned for that. Of course we are. We, I pray the Lord's protection often. But the fact is, it's, this is a spiritual battle. And we are his ambassadors, his emissaries, his soldiers. Um, down here on earth and he listens to us and what we pray gives him the the the, the beckoning he needs uh, to come down from heaven with his with his solutions in his time now i want just to look at what it is people are always talking about this we get it often the most unlikely people come to us and say what's going on is god involved they kind of half know that he's got to be involved in some way, even though they may have been atheists before. And it's like when tragedy strikes, it's, it does, sadly, um, it, people will turn to God in case there is somebody there and the Lord is waiting to answer that kind of prayer. But Jesus spoke with anguish about the law. The law is the commandments of God, what is right and what is wrong, by God's standards, absolute standards. It's the difference between right and wrong. Do this, don't do that. And um, Jesus speaks this about it. He said, don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I certainly didn't come to destroy them, but that the law might be fulfilled uh, in the lives. That applies to people uh, who give their lives to the Lord and are truly born again. For Jesus says, truly I assure you, that until heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or tittle, that's not another way of saying, not one tiny detail of the law will be lost until everything is fulfilled. So the law is standing unchangeable. That's God's yardstick, a definition of, of right and wrong. Therefore, Jesus continues, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and particularly teaches men to break them, and how about children in schools? What are we instructed to teach them today, I wonder? These shall be seen as the least in the kingdom of heaven. That means to say they will be regarded by the kingdom of heaven as the very least among men and women. But whoever lives the commandments and teaches them, well, that person shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, says Jesus, that unless your righteousness far exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, the scribes and the Pharisees were people who thought they were senior to everybody else. They're still there, actually, out in Israel. If you visit them, you can't miss them. And, and they, they're very much centered on themselves and how they um, are supposed to keep the law. They, they preach the law, but... They complicate everything, and Jesus sees the heart. And they were described as a, a mug, a cup, that was very good looking on the outside, but inside contains all kinds of darkness and extortion because God sees the heart, not the outside appearance that we want him to see. So as church people, we have to be careful about that one, um, not to enter into any form of hypocrisy because it's very easy to go along with church things and yet not actually involve oneself in what they're doing and what they're saying. So um, the Lord has said that he's going to uncover and shout from the rooftops. And there is, my friends, trust me if you've, if you've not heard this before, there is a huge uncovering of the real conspiracy already in progress. But it's, of course it's very heavily suppressed by the media who are sponsored, there are some people who really got the beginnings of unlocking this. We, we know who they are. And some of you know who they are as well. And a f there are a few of those who've been involved who are actually out of conscience uh, owning up to what they've done. 
which is a very brave thing to do. But the thing is that massive corruption, and this is um, not just cyber warfare, that may be the weaponry of it, but it's, it's corruption in high places in many nations, and particularly in America at the present time. And it's aiming for power and currency control over other nations by any means, fair or foul. You get what I'm saying. It is Satan, and he is bidding for the world. But the Lord is not going to let him win. Um, oh, no. Once fully revealed by the Lord in his timing, the world will cry out in even greater anguish. Because sin is wretched. We hate to see it in ourselves. Um, we hate it when it comes against us. We see it in other people. Um, people suffer under sin. And I just want to say this, that um, the Lord is a, extremely involved. He doesn't turn a blind eye to anything. He sees it all. And the most hurtful sin to God of all sins, my friends, it's the abortion industry. Of course it is. He loves the babies. He's the creator of a baby. And each baby inside its mother is at the maximum risk that it'll ever be in the rest of its life. It's the most dangerous place to be inside what was supposed to be the safety of the mother's womb. And each one of those babies has a life's destiny if he turns to God. And, but what's the chance? It's appalling. And this goes on just that men and women can misbehave as they please without facing any of the consequences and they miss all the joy and all the glory. But my friends, the good news, the good news, this goes over the top of everything I say today, is that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is waiting with open arms. And he's waiting to catch the outfall because once true repentance breaks out, then revival can come. And we're going to see this. We're going to see the world leaders repenting. And things are going on, aren't they, in, in London as well. Um, they are. So we're waiting for this to happen. And once that starts, repentance is highly infectious and revival will be the outcome. Now, uh, we're going to visit Noah and, and have a ride in his ark when I come back later. In the meantime, we're going to listen to music, praise and worship. Um, we're going to be together in this. We're separate, but if we keep to the schedule, uh, we're going to be singing together. And we thank Serian. Serian, bless you for arranging the music for us. And we look forward to your choices. And we'll see you later. Amen.